glad you could join us as we welcome you to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Here inside of Maples Pavilion, the lights are off for a moment, but the uh, big time matchups are headed your way in just seconds. Iowa State and Maryland, the seven versus the 10 in the first ever meeting between these two programs. The winner of this game gets the winner of Stanford and Norfolk State. The Cardinal, of course, the host school here, all a part of Regional Four in Portland. So glad you could join us once again alongside of Brooke Weisbrod. I am Roy Philpott inside of Maples Pavilion and these two teams tonight. Brooke, they'll do it in different ways with different paces potentially. Yeah, Maryland is a team that gets nearly 80 points a game. So they want pace up and fouls down specifically with Cheyenne Sellers. And then you look at Iowa State. They got the young guns coming into this game. So head coach Bill Fenley is probably saying, all right, ladies, one possession at a time. Yeah, Iowa State led by five freshmen tonight, if you can believe that in this era of the transfer portal. We take a look at our most reliable team presented by Xfinity and you mentioned Emily Ryan the veteran in the backcourt Addie Brown the freshman a dynamic duo you've got senior leadership and a young freshman who has the vision of an upperclassman in Addie Brown Emily Ryan leads this team in assists she came through with 17 in one game so those two working together is a great dynamic for the Cyclones Shai Sellers first team all Big Ten for the Terrapins the junior from Aurora Ohio and you want to talk about efficiency, mm -hmm. she brings that to the table. 13 games broke over 50% from the floor. Let's take a look at our starting lineups presented by Capital One. We mentioned Shai Sellers, first team all Big Ten. Jakia Brown-Turner, an X-Factor, the transfer from NC State. And for Iowa State, led by a very talented freshman class, including Audie Crooks, first team Big 12 this year, all-conference performer. And she's going to be a lot to handle tonight for this Maryland team that's not as deep probably as the Cyclones. Yeah, they've had to deal with injuries this year. So coming into this game, you know, it is really going to look at experience. You know, two very powerful conferences going at it. And Crooks, one of the young freshmen in the game, incredible footwork. Sellers comes into this game, almost 150 offensive boards. She gets on the glass. Stanford and Norfolk State coming up when we're done with our first game. Welcome to the Wild Wild West. And we are just about set, ready to go. The Cyclones out of the Big 12 in the white uniforms. Maryland, of course, out of the Big 10 in the black unis. It'll be Faith Masonis, Audie Crooks. And we are underway in Maples in the opening tap, controlled by the Cyclones. Already an eventful tournament. Emily Ryan now healthy. We'll send it inside to Brown in the easy bucket. Well, having to deal with Maryland's pressure defense, the way that they switch sometimes mid-possession, I mean, they give you a lot of different looks. And Bill Fenley was telling his team today, hey, don't be surprised if you're open. Shoot the basketball. McDaniel's open. She'll do that and tie us up at two. McDaniel's been named the Energizer Bunny of this team. See, already some pressure for Maryland, that 1-2-2 two, two press. Cyclones played for their second consecutive Big 12 championship, lost to Texas. And while Maryland made a nice run in the Big Ten Championship, defeated Ohio State, a two seed in this year's tournament. And eventually ousted by Nebraska. It'll stay on this end with nine to shoot. You see Emily Ryan already talking out, making sure the shot clock, everybody knows, just nine seconds. Plenty of time to make a play. But one of the loudest voices on the floor, number 11 in white. So Brenda Fries, hard to believe it's been 22 years since she took over in College Park, two-time National Coach of the Year, 2006 National Champion, of course. Different team this year for that program that made a run to the Elite Eight a season ago. Ryan sprung free, can't get the bounce. Crooks, the offensive glass, no. And Masona's the board. Here's where Maryland can be at their best. Transition basketball to the kickout. Sellers, wide open for three. That's a nice start. That's how you get going in the NCAA tournament. It's definitely going to hype you up on defense. And Bree McDaniel out there clapping her hands. She loves the pressure. Off the deflection, Cyclones get it back. And that was Brown that corralled it. Inside to Crooks, the size advantage in the bucket. Iowa State has been very efficient with the basketball. They're trying to go inside, not over dribble. And I like the way Maryland is spacing so far. How about two threes for 24 in black? Bree McDaniel from downtown. How about the look back to the band after she hit the corner shot? Tons of personality for 2-4. 
Rihanna Jackson has it two and white. One of her first touches. Brown's left wide open. And the triple comes up short. McDaniel clears. Terps want to run. Iowa State would prefer a little bit of a slower game tonight. Sellers will test another three. And tapped out of bounds. It'll go back to the Cyclones. You mentioned the reaction. You love the emotion of March. Bro. Come on. You got to bring the personality. Bring McDaniel coming into this game, shooting over 40% from two, from three. Let's the band know you can play that song all night long. <laughs> you are clearly in postseason form Let's to go. start tonight as well. <laughs> It is an exciting time of year. Maryland doubling up Iowa State early here in Stanford. Of course, this was a side a year ago where the Cardinal were upset against Ole Miss, number one seed. Cameron Blink Brink had the flu that for the start of the tournament. Inside to Brown, the backdoor cut is there, one possession game. Cardinal. Great, oh, sorry, right. I was just going to say, what a great job by Iowa State, able to isolate Brown on that side and a little jab step. They're getting free back door against this pressure. Good look, Masonis inside, and the layup is there. 10 to 6. Terps start a blistering 80% from the floor. You know, we heard Brenda Freeze talking about how they wanted to start this game off, punching first, be the aggressive team. And it starts defensively with Maryland. I always make low. simple plays, yeah. Tabu off the mark. Couldn't get back her own miss. Good start for Maryland, the 10 seed. And the running one hander spins in Masonis again. Masonis is going to be a key player in this game. 15 starts this season, but a wealth of experience. It's featured in an article today, headline in the Washington Post. Brenda Fries made sure her team knew about that. Front it's page. shoot around this morning. And congrats to Faith, who was uh, featured in said article featured so far tonight. Bellinger off the mark her first touch. You know, when you have a team like Maryland who can run shoot threes and trend transition get in that comfort zone. It's going to make Iowa State not send a lot of players to the offensive glass and that's going to be a charge. That was a great heads up play by Cheyenne Sellers. She took the charge over Nelly and the Tabu. Tabu picks up her first personal. Bill Finley, year number 29. Head coach at Iowa State going all the way back to 1995. Audie Crooks, the sensational freshman, has headlined this group that they call the Fab Five in Ames. We asked him today, not a lot of portal players on the roster. He goes, you know, that's not really how we build our program in Ames, Iowa. And he's done a remarkable job with a Roster that really turned over considerably after last year's team made the dance was upset by Toledo in the first round and it's another three for the Terps Ali Kubek. Now the Terps getting great spacing and passing and Iowa State is going to have to make some adjustments. You have to contest the three a little more and then for Maryland you're going to try to score inside if they do it. Crooks are second basket. You know, few players are able to hold their position the way Crooks is, and she gives the guards a great target. Oh, Kubek man. wide open, her second triple. And the Towson transfer helping ignite a 10 to 2 run for the Terps. Crooks inside, give her six. Well, Iowa State currently trading twos for threes, yeah. and Maryland is taking advantage after this fast start. Sellers off glass is going to shoot a pair. I mean, you have no no doubt who the more aggressive team is in this game. You know, Maryland is trying to get all the way downhill to the rim. If they get stopped, they're turning around and seeing who's filling the lane on transition to hit three. Brenda Fries' team already with 18 on the board with four of five from deep. They said four and a half hour flight, what? It's we a long this. flight. It's a long yeah, it flight. Is. We were trying to calculate the mileage from College Park, Maryland earlier. I've got it at 2,913 miles from College Park to Maples Pavilion. That is a long ways. Does they get you an extra snack box or, or a meal? I think at least an extra snack box. I would hope so. I would think so. One more free throw coming. Brenda Freeze graduated from Arizona, former Iowa State assistant under Bill Finley. And Sellers drains a pair. I loved hearing the stories about Coach Finley telling, talking about Brenda Fries and her incredible ability to find the best recruits in the smallest towns 
I mean, to make those relationships and those connections happen, you know, she'd be picking up the phone sometimes and saying, hey, listen, you, you got 15 minutes. You got to get down here right now. Cyclones back to work. Brenda Fries known as an outstanding recruiter, and that shot comes up well short by Kelsey Jones. A putback is there. And then Maryland turns it over on the inbounds. Jakia Brown Turner stepped across the end line. That'll give it back to ISU. Well, they have a saying called fear the turtle. You need to fear the deep turtle in this game. Bree McDaniel, plenty of players getting in on the action. Kubek with a couple herself. The Terps four or five from three. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Inspire. Sleep apnea innovation, no mask, no hose, just sleep. And a look back at the Terrapins' run to the title back in 2006. Brenda Freeze cutting down the nets and what a sensational championship that was that year. And she's been to the Final Four two other occasions and all the trips to the dance over the years and now year number 22 in College Park. And she's got a team where all five starters played in the Elite Eight. So the experience is there. Brenda Freeze, who's you know, been in this NCAA tournament a bunch. She understands what it takes to win. You know, and even in a season where she feels, you know, her roster, you know, it's been disjointed. It's been dealing with injuries. And now Iowa State trying to match them from the outside. They'll definitely need to get some threes in. As you mentioned, they can't just trade two, twos for threes. Ryan from downtown makes it a five-point game. Yeah, you mentioned all five Maryland starters have participated in the Elite Eight. Jakia Brown-Turner did it with another team at NC State as the Terps turn it over. It's a little tricky when you said it. Brenda Freeze told us that earlier, too. And I'm like, yeah. that's, that's kind of tricky, Coach. She goes, yeah, but all five starters have been there. That's right. That's right. Well, in, in the era of portal, you know, you're going to have to do your research a little you know, deeper to kind of figure out, hey, what the experience is, because it's Seller's second charge. Ryan called for the foul. Because teams have eight, nine new players like, right. all the time, every year. And we talk to both coaches about this and, and coaches across the country. You know, the strategy versus going through the, the portal versus recruiting high school. It's a big deal right now. On well, the portal window open this week. So mm -hmm. imagine you're participating in the tournament and also recruiting and looking ahead towards next year. Considering the timing of that, it is unique. Please send flowers to assistant coaches all over the country. Kubek, her third three of the quarter. This is an incredible start for the Terps. I mean, for them to come all the way, you know, a little bit further, obviously, than Iowa State, but to start the game the way that they said, hey, we want to be aggressive, defensively. They're getting charges, deflections, and hitting big time outside shots. Amir Du, the runner, and she was bumped and foul. Free throws coming for five and wide, but Ali Kubek, an early story, the redshirt junior from Elkton, Maryland. Okay, averaging eight points a game this season. You leave her open, big time shots come from big time players in these moments, and Quebec is well on her way to having a day. Eight points, four boards per game already with nine for the 2020 Delaware Player of the Year, going back to her high school days. Do with the stripe, 83% on this season. Averaging 6.1 points per contest. Started her career at Butler, now in the Big Ten at Maryland. And for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Lead at seven. Maryland gets it back, and Sellers walks it up. Maryland has constructed this advantage really without Jakia Brown Turner getting going. Back iron, Sellers on the offensive glass, up and in. See that you can't have happen. Sellers was able to get that rebound over basically all five Iowa State players. Terps are currently tracking for over 100 points in their first round matchup with Iowa State. Brown off the mark, Sellers has it again. And another three for the Terps. There wow. it goes. Brene Alexander from downtown. 
When you've got players starting to hit shots early, it feels good. So you keep that rhythm going. Right now, it's all about the pace and the rhythm for Maryland. So if they can continue to make Iowa State one shot, get that board and go, and they're right in their sweet spot. Six for seven start from distance for the Terrapins. Out of the Big Ten, and you want to talk about making it look easy. That's what they're doing so far. Do try to get it back. It's ripped away by Sellers. McDaniel. Round bothered that shot. The put back for who else? Kubek again. Check it. No, that was Masonis. Well, everything going Maryland's way. It was a great defensive play from Maddie Brown. She actually blocked that shot, but it ended up right in the hands of Masonis. So another massive run. 10 to 1 now for Maryland. And you have to think, you know, a young team like Iowa State, can, can they handle a game? Well, they certainly can handle that pass. Addie Brown, she is the next when it comes to point guards. But right, this young team, they're, they don't know what they don't know yet. So can they come back here, offer a blistering start for Maryland, putting up over 30? Masonis cannot miss. Eight points for Faith, already over her season average. Kubek has been instrumental as well. She's got three triples and a foul be called against Maryland inside. Cheyenne Sellers entering the tournament. Just about 150 offensive boards on the year. Here's the shot. Luther just able to get up. Not over the back at all, just understanding the timing and then more great passing leads to assist and unselfish basketball for Maryland. One oh five remaining in our first quarter and it has been a dominant start for the 10 seed. Trying to spot Crooks and it's picked off by Kubek. Iowa State just in search of a couple of stops here at the end of the quarter. Cyclones show their matchup zone. Masonis. And a rebound comes to Emily Fisher. It was tapped right into her, her hands, and a foul was called. And Iowa State head coach Bill Fenley just jumping out of his seat, pleading with his players to box out and get after a board. Sometimes it looks like Iowa State is a beat or two behind Maryland. But their Second feet are personal stuck. on Emily Ryan, too. It's a big deal. And one more free throw for Emily Fisher. Just checked in, 59% free throw shooter. Bill Fenley in search of answers. This team will not be rattled despite their. Inexperience in postseason play with five talented freshmen on the floor early and often tonight. Well, hard not to be rattled when the Terrapins came out 33 points already in this first quarter. That that will open your eyes a bit. Welcome to postseason play. No mathematician, but that's tracking for about 130 it's, something points. It's kind of a lot. I'm gonna trust your math more than mine, but <laughs> it sounds like a lot. Four second differential between the clocks. Jackson will wait to go. Picked up by McDaniel, swatted out, seven to shoot. Bree McDaniel is so excited about defense. It's fun watching how engaged she gets. She's always clapping her hands, was taking a look at that ball, seeing if she could poke it away at all. Cyclones got to go. Kelsey Jones, left-handed delivery. Lead at 13. Here comes McDaniel, lost the handle. And that is how our first quarter comes to a close. What a start for Maryland. Six of seven from deep and the lead at 13. Cyclones trying to rally. Again, our second quarter coming up. Back in Stanford, California, here come the Maryland Terrapins. A 13-point lead start of our second quarter as we take a look at our time to get more presented by Geico and we tell you about the Iowa State Cyclones and the Fab Five that talented freshman class How about they have accounted for nearly 64 percent of the team's total points this year. That is the top number in Division One in terms of youth and that kind of production and the second most entering the dance since going back to 2009. 
Now, this team is dangerous, and a young team that you know, they don't know how bright this stage actually is. It was interesting talking to Coach Finley about what his senior, how his seniors are approaching this game you know, much differently than, than the loose mindset of the freshmen. But somebody who knows all about that on the Maryland Terrapin side with Chrissy Tolliver as a freshman hitting that big shot in 2006. Brenner Fries knows what it's like to have a young team. Kubek in double figures already. That was her first two-pointer. And the lead extending to 15. I want to get your take on what Iowa State needs to do defensively. Maryland just appears to be in the zone, but on offense, they actually had a respectable 20 points in the first 10. Crooks was able to get her touches and was fouled inside. Jakia Brown-Turner trying to defend. And the foul's called on Sellers. That's her first. What it looks like to me is that Iowa State is comfortable, but not aggressive. They're not out of sorts, but it's like, you got to bring it. Maryland knows what it takes to get to the second round. They know what it takes to get to the Elite Eight. You know, five players out there have been there. So, yeah, they're going to start off punching first, and they have done that. Can Iowa State punch back? That's going to be the key if they can get in and win this game. Contact and double dribble the call. Well, Bristow turns it over. Our veteran officiating crew led by Jesse Dickerson tonight. Finney Robinson and Charles Gonzalez also, and we'll take another look. Yeah, that was a good call. Got the double dribble before any contact was made. Fourth turnover for the Cyclones. Now one thing Bill Finley asked of his players today was one less turnover. And a better line, though, about the shot. A, a shot is much better than a turnover, so go ahead and get that off quick. Elbow J for Sellers. Brown clears. Yeah, Bill Finley actually handwrites his scouting reports to distribute to the team. Handwriting is immaculate. And one of the keys was, yeah, you need to have one fewer turnover than the person that you are guarding. Inside, Brown Turner, no. Saved by the Terps. And a fresh 20. The 50-50 ball advantage has gone Maryland's way. So far, all game. Sellers, plenty of time. And Crooks, the rebound. Audie Crooks quietly making her presence known in the early going. Averaging nearly a double-double. Jones the three. Brown on the offensive glass. And is saved by Brown Turner. Alexander another three. Keep it going. Till this train cools off, it's full steam ahead for the Terps. Light them up from deep. You know, again, it's all about that pace. They've missed one three-point shot in this game. And they've taken eight. Yeah. Kelsey Jones, younger sister of Ashley Jones. And it goes back to the Terps. The lead at 16, the three-point shooting has been the difference. And you've got it from all over the board. You know, many different players have hit threes for Maryland. So it's like, how do you scout for that? Because you know Sellers is great off the bounce, can finish in traffic. So Iowa State, you know, one thing they need to be doing more is extending their defense, talking more, just being more active. I've seen a lot of hands down, closed mouths. They, they, they got to get it together. Baseline drive, the reverse no for Masonis. Cyclones get a stop. And that will help them offensively too, Roy. It'll help them play more aggressive. Three-point differential. Significant. Iowa State trying to close that gap. Brown off the mark with her second miss from deep. You've got 21 points on the board from outside the three-point arc for Maryland. Just three on the board for Iowa State. The differential, 18. When coaches talk about rebounding and defense and transition defense, sometimes it's about making shots. It's always about making shots. I would agree. The day. I agree. Brenda Freeze back to her bench. Emily Fisher comes in. And Kubek gets a well-deserved breather. 14 in black who tore her ACL the preseason of her first year at Maryland two years ago. Red-shirted. And coming off the bench at times throughout this season has been a Three-point force, and again tonight. If you look at just the number of field goals, Maryland's only hit four more field goals in this game than Iowa State, but this lead of 16 Brooks. built from the, the, beyond the line. 
Fortunate to get it back. She will shoot two. Well, Crooks has already scored 10 tonight, four boards. Member of the All-Big 12 freshman team, unanimous All-Big 12 first team, even in her first campaign in Ames. And set the freshman record for scoring and buckets. And Brooke, wouldn't you know, she was a multi-sport standout in high school, playing in small town Iowa, including a state championship claimed in the shot put. And celebrating that title, of course, as a multi-talented prep athlete. Talked to her a little bit about it yesterday and a lot of pride in that title. She's got 11 points tonight. I love it. I'm all for the multi-sport athletes and what it can do to enhance your game. But yeah, I mean, you talk about strength and being able to hold your position in the post, the hands, the touch. Audi Crooks has all of that. Rare miss from outside for McDaniel. Opening for the Cyclones. Ryan hounded by McDaniel on the other end. Iowa State's got to got, got to move the ball a little bit better. They don't have it in their hands. Emily Ryan's been doing a great job of trying to dribble and open things up, and Crooks can clean it up. 13 and five already for number 55. Lead down to 13. Two programs have never met before. This is the first all-time meeting tonight. Featuring two head coaches that are very familiar with each other. There's a steal by Du. Nymere Du trying to go coast to coast. That's the best defensive set in first turnover we've seen where the pick six has worked in Iowa State's favor. Now the bench, the fans coming alive trying to support these Cyclones. Du's got five coming off the bench tonight. Big possession for the Terps. Fisher, no. Crooks another rebound. And she was fouled trying to execute the outlet pass. That'll be called on McDaniel. Her first, we take a look at the NCAA Women's Championship bracket here in Stanford. Winner of this game get the winner of our next game between the Cardinal, the number two seed, the host school, and Norfolk State. The Spartans, the MEAC champions, the only team that won their conference right. coming in all the way from Virginia. I was prepped ahead of time. It is not Norfolk State. Norfolk, Norfolk. right? Am I saying that right? That's correct. Okay. Very good. Larry Vickers approves. All right, good. Well, you know, when you get a tournament, you know, you got to know it's not Louisville, Louisville. Louisville is no longer playing in That's the tournament. That's right. MTSU, no Tennessee State. It's a big upset win today. Down 18. Brooks has Brooks. been a force inside. 15 on the board with six rebounds. So if you're Maryland, you got to send a double earlier. On the throw, she cannot, get, she can't catch the ball. You got to send somebody who's got hops and be able to get it at that height before she reaches up to get it. An open look. That's another three right. drained by Kubek. Her fourth of the night. Oh, 14. Cannot have space. Now the Kubek knocking it down from deep. Maryland, they still hop from outside. To Brook and Riot Maples. L, thank you very much. Here we are, Maples Pavilion, Stanford, California. And a good start by the Terrapins. The three point shooting has been the difference. Already eight threes drilled by Maryland, and that's swatted out of bounds by Brown Turner. Iowa State gets it back, and Kubek with those four threes. That is a new season high. Those 14 points already. The previous best from behind the three-point arc was three. And we got a lot of basketball left to play. <laughs> I know that's right. And Andrea said it. She is holding this team down. And getting a lot of movement, too, when Crooks is in the game and she's on her. Kubek off that screen and roll can step out. It's a shot clock running down and out for Iowa State. What an incredible defensive performance also, you know, from Maryland. Their ability to switch at any position, to just be aware of what's going on. I mean, you're getting turnovers. You're also getting 30-second shot clock violations. Those are big wins. And you would think Emily Ryan, the veteran point guard that yeah. she is, she wants to be a coach, not going to make that mistake all that often. Sellers was fouled. And numeral zero back to the free throw line. So the foul called on Dew, that's her first. It's been a clean game for both sides for the most part, with the exception of Ryan's two personals. 
And Shai Sellers back to the free throw line, and that's actually a second on due as well. When we talked to Shai yesterday, we asked her, as you look back on this season, what are you most proud of? And she said, our resiliency. Yeah. You know, we've had to deal with injuries. They lost Lavender Briggs at the end of February to an ACL and Riley Nelson as well earlier in the year. Bounce back in the Big Ten Tournament, Brooke, to beat Ohio State. And I think there's a lot of confidence with this team as a result of that late win in postseason play. I think so, especially, you know, look at the way Ohio State played today, knowing you just you know, beat that team. And it's about who can play the best at the right time. Can you come together? Can you have chemistry? This Maryland team, they, you know, they've seen the hard times. They built it, come up together, and they got that chemistry and experience. It's dangerous. Two for three, and a high archer is off the back iron. Ryan will try to save it and nearly carry him into the scorer's table. Save some laptops, that's for sure. Yeah, or press row, I should say. You don't see press row too often down on the court that's anymore, right. right? Usually they're relegated to upstairs somewhere. Better coverage, though, when you're down. I agree. I mean, it's, it's hard to go anywhere and just watch a basketball game after you get the seats. You know, this front row access here. It's Sellers. She's getting so deep in the paint. Every time she's got the ball in her hands, and Kubek just says, I got more for you. What Absolute you got, fire for number 14 Woo. in black. She oh. has not missed tonight. Allie Kubek doing work. The Maryland Terrapins. Addie Brown, the Euro, and she traveled in the process. The lead up to 17. Allie Kubek, I don't think anybody saw this coming, but great job by her taking the shots, by her teammates finding her and exploiting the matchup. And as Audie Crooks will get called for, it's like a blocking foul there, but exploiting Crooks out of the paint. She can't get out to guard Kubek fast enough, and Kubek's making her pay. Terps turn it over, Iowa State gets it back. Trailing by 17, it's an eight nothing burst in the last two minutes. After Iowa State kind of got the fight back to the middle of the ring. Well now if you're watching this game and you think it's over, I, I would like to remind you that Middle Tennessee State was down 18 against Louisville earlier today. So keep on watching this Maryland team. Well you just made, hot. you made Jeff Walls turn the channel, thanks a lot. <laughs> hey, every fan in America, when they watch games this weekend, they want these comebacks. You know, they want to see games that are tight, last second shot, big time wins. And yeah, I know today's got to feel real heavy for Louisville, a team that has advanced past the first round for so many seasons. Jeff Walls, an incredible coach, had a team that was well coached, ready to play deep into the postseason. You know, but no Tennessee State. They just showed up one better today, came back from 18 down. What a performance by the Blue Raiders. Yeah, the talk in Baton Rouge was. Haley Van Lith against her old team, provided that both the higher seeds held serve. That did not happen. Rare three-point miss, chased down Jakia Brown-Turner. The offensive glass has been very good to Maryland. You know, the season we talked about, Cheyenne Sellers getting off on the glass as well, but Jakia Brown-Turner, she's got 136 offensive rebounds. You have got to put a body, and that's one thing I would say it hasn't done in this game, is box out very well. 10-0 run for Maryland. The lead at 19, the largest of this game. And a foul called on Emily Fisher. Free throws coming for the Cyclones for the rest of the half. Anna Bellinger at the stripe, 83% at the line this year. Started her career at Truman State. 31 starts this season. And the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship, first round continues tomorrow, 1 Eastern. On ABC, Paige Beckers, UConn hosts Jackson State. Then Caitlin Clark leads Iowa against Holy Cross. ESPN has Kent State taking on Notre Dame. And then USC and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. All games also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch them anywhere. Talk about stars. Caitlin Clark, Juju Watkins, Paige Beckers, all tomorrow. Hannah Hidalgo. Hannah Hidalgo. You got a whole day. Really talented freshman at Notre Dame. I know we're, we're looking forward you know, with the in-between day from games here. Sit up, watch a ton of basketball. We've got some great matchups going on tomorrow. 
And the incredible start for Ali Kubek. We mentioned that ACL tear a year and a half ago before the start of her first campaign in College Park. She wears that left knee brace, protecting that knee, but started her career at Towson. Two seasons there, and now in the Big Ten. Boy, she is saving her very best for last at the end of this season with what has been a career performance. 19 points so far. Wow. And we haven't even hit halftime. The most unexpected things can happen in March. Emily Ryan trying to do what she can to keep her team alive. And Crooks came. She showed up. She said, that's right, and one. Let's go. Chance for three. Audie Crooks. Crooks was 17 already. And the next highest score for her squad. Just five points from due. So the freshman doing her part, doing her role. Can the Cyclones play a little more team ball, get some other just simple scores and create it off a of defense? Certainly help them. Lead down to 17. Iowa State needs a stop and a couple of buckets before halftime to feel a little better about things. Winner of this game gets the winner of Stanford and Norfolk State. That game set to tip at around 10 o'clock Eastern tonight here at Maples. Loser will see their season come to an end. Emily Fisher with a mid-range. So you kind of get the sense of whoever Audie Crooks is guarding, you want that player to step out and to test her ability to get out and contest. Bellinger from deep. And the second three ball of the half for Iowa State. And the lead down to 16. Well, she's somebody you want in the game. She hit those back-to-back -back threes in the Big 12 championship game to cut into the lead. You know, you need somebody who can make big shots like that. And that's Bellinger. Masonis with the push off and an offensive foul. Now the whistle came a little bit late, but that was the right call as the forearm was extended frontwards. Yeah, exactly right. You know, do staying with the offensive player. And Masonis going baseline here, and you see that left arm. You gotta sell it though. And she did. Shot clock is off. Big possession for the Cyclones at the end of the half, trailing by 16. It's a 20 point game just moments ago and here's Ryan. And Maryland switching everything that is created havoc in this contest. Crooks inside and an offensive foul no basket. And thankfully for Iowa that's her first foul. We'll take a look, Audie on the block, and the payoff is a charge. That has to be three or four, just in the first half for Maryland. Such an energetic game changer. Bree McDaniel's got to go from half court. Off the backboard. Ali Kubek, 19 points, a rebound, a dime, all the threes that went down. A true difference maker for the Maryland Terrapins. Just four points off of her career high. A career high in threes made. Let's get you to the studio. L. Duncan, Rebecca Lobo, Andrea Carter. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Stanford, California, the place to be in prime time on a Friday night. Ali Kubek has been simply awesome. A career high five threes in our first 20 minutes. And the shot chart tells the uh, entire story with the outstanding work she has turned in. Those 19 points operating on both sides of the floor. Boy, that looks fancy. And we certainly <laughs> love to see it. If you're a Maryland fan, you certainly do as well. With Brooke Weisbrod, I am Roy Philpott. Welcome back to our broadcast location. Maryland 20 minutes in has been sensational. Yeah, I mean, you can't have a much better half the way that Maryland played, hitting so many shots and taking advantage of every ad advantage that they were given by Iowa State. You know, you're going to sag. They're going to hit some threes. Defensively, Maryland switching all five positions. Only Audie Crooks right now for Iowa State is producing. Yeah, she was sensational in the first half as well. Let's take a look at our game track presented by Invesco QQQ. Audie Crooks, you mentioned 18.7 boards. Terps led by as many as 20 points. That deficit for Iowa State currently at 16. Three-point shooting, the three-point differential significant in the yeah. first half. Yeah, and so if you're Iowa State, you just have to come out with the same fire that Maryland started this game with. You know, again, you're looking at a young Iowa State team, an experienced Maryland team. So when it comes tournament time, 
You know, we saw on the men's side what Oakland did to Kentucky. You know, experience versus youth. And that's how you want to do it if you're the Cyclones now. Hannah Bellinger from deep, the senior from Wisconsin. Trims the lead to 13 just like that. Well, I like the fact that they went to her early. You mentioned the big threes that she hit in the Big 12 championship that kind of cut into that lead, you know. You need someone from Crooks to balance out that inside scoring, and Bellinger's giving it to you. McDaniel with a mid-range no. The rebound cleared by Jackson. Crooks has position, the size advantage, but the pass wasn't there from Brown. Now, usually Brown is spot on with passing, but that's a difficult pass to make. And the layup in front of Crooks by Masonis. She now is in double figures with 10. It was a quiet 18 for Crooks in that first half, but you look at the stat sheet by the end, and boy, she lived under the rim, made a number of contested layups. That's another three, this time from Ryan. Smart strategy by Bill Fenley and his staff. A couple of set plays for some open look threes, and they are right back in this game. Brown Turner, the hesitation bumped on the release by Brown. Jakia Brown Turner is going to shoot two, the foul on Addie Brown. And that's her second. Now, Jakia Brown Turner, the transfer from NC State, all Big Ten second team performer. She was consistent with the production. Double figures in 23 games this year. It's 11 in black. And the experience of the deep run that NC State made a year ago and multiple runs for Westmore down in Riley, significant. When you add that to this Maryland team this year, they had to replace draft picks and its starting point guard from last year's team. Yeah, I mean, it's tough for, for any school to try to replace, you know, when you're looking at portal situations, when you starters, you got WNBA potential. So it's it's tough. So Brenda Freeze, you know, doing the best job that she can. It's still getting 19 wins, nine wins in a conference that is very difficult to play in. And Big Ten was incredibly tough this year as Crooks gets that position inside. The feed from Brown was better that time, and it was higher. Yes, but Crooks also held her position longer. Crooks with 20. Fade away, no. The rebound by Brown, and a nice box out against Brown-Turner. Now Crooks beat Sellers down the floor. She was calling for it. And she wants the basketball, and a foul called away from the rim. Audie Crooks, first team all Big 12, 20 on the board already. Yeah, and the difference is when she can get that post position and stay there. Watch, she stays until she's got that ball within reach, does not give the defense Faith Masonis any room to jump up and get it. Foul was called on McDaniel, and that's going to be her third. So Bree McDaniel. We'll get a breather. Jakia Brown Turner will as well. And a chance here for Iowa State as Brenda Freeze calls her team over. And everybody gets a free timeout here, it looks like. Yeah, you always want to get a little. And I think they're going to treat an injury. Jakia Brown Turner taking a look at the left hand and perhaps a cut. Brown Turner stays on the floor. Quick work. May have to protect that nail too now. Could have gotten snagged. It happens. Shakia Brown Turner, we mentioned the transfer from state and career highs with the production under head coach Brenda Freeze. Emily Ryan with a path inside oh! the reverse. Who saw that coming? Ryan straight down the lane and found some opening with some English. The lead down to nine, and Maryland turns it over. Here come the Cyclones, trailed by as many as 20 in the first half. Brown with a path of her own, and it was stripped on the way up. Addie Brown wanted the foul, didn't get the whistle. Here comes Maryland. Well, Iowa State much quicker to close out near the three. Sellers lost the handle. Bellinger on the floor. And a jump ball, it stays on this end. That was a quick whistle. Let's go back and watch this last play here. And go inside, Ryan splits the defense. The only option was to give it some spin. That was tricky. That was a hard play. She's tough though, that's where her experience is gonna set this team 
you know, and, and try to get them right as they head here in this third quarter, chip away at this lead. The senior from Kansas just wants to be out there. Emily Ryan wants to be a head coach. Sellers was fouled as Bellinger picks up her first. You mentioned to me yesterday we were watching practices. Iowa State checked in here at Maples. One look and Sellers connects inside. So a crafty inbounds play, but you told me right away, Emily Ryan, she looks like she's gonna be a coach. Yeah, I mean she's got all, all the skill sets, you know, great point guard, leadership. And the way she was being vocal though in practice, that's really what stood out to me. Watch this, Brooke. And we've seen this a couple times this year, have we not? Sellers, heads up. Audie Crooks stealing the inbounds off her back. Assist to herself. Sellers has three fouls. That's something to watch. Here's Ryan. Do you get the dime when you do that? I mean, if it was up to me, I'd count it. Brown open for a moment, in and out. And a foul called as Jones hit the deck. And the personal foul against Maryland. It'll stay with Iowa State. And, and Maryland right now just trying to regroup, rehuddle, and, and get on the same page. You kind of see everybody trying to huddle together. Those are always little moments. Remember, we talked about bounce back. The team that can bounce back quicker from mistakes typically is the team that can win. Second foul on Masonis. Ballinger, an open look. Boy, the shot looked pure, and this time it's off the mark. And a good decision by Iowa State to not go with Crooks. Andy Brown firing over a pass to the corner. First miss for Kubek. By an inch. That ball was in and out. Career high is 23. She has 19 tonight. Iowa State from downtown. That was Kelsey Jones. So three threes by the Cyclones to open up our third quarter and a brand new game in Maples Pavilion. Cyclones just needed a half to get it figured out. Coming out west. They did not fear the turtle. They just said we need a little time to see what's behind that shell. And now for tonight's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. And we mentioned it earlier, but Brenda Fries and Bill Finley, former coaches at Iowa State. Finley, the head coach back in 95. Brenda Fries was one of his top assistants and best recruiters and some vintage 1990s photos. Ooh, I mean, boy, power just, suits. I mean, they are everywhere. The dress was fantastic for both coaches. And of course, they remain pretty close friends today. And Brenda Fries, in fact, was waiting on Coach Finley as they arrived for their shoot arounds this morning. Maryland went first and Iowa State came in to Maples Pavilion. And as Coach Finley stepped off the bus, he was greeted with a large hug and a long conversation, which uh, we were privy to for just a couple of minutes. It was great to see, but a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. And the two, I think, Brooke, have learned a ton from each other. Yeah, I, well said. I mean, and it was just great to hear some of the old stories about you know, recruiting and what it took back then as Kubek continues to have herself a day. But Brenda Freeze, you know, caught the attention of Coach Finley and just did what it took and continues to be an incredible recruiter. Told us a story today that out of respect, I will not share because she said, don't give away my, my recruiting nuggets. But she is brilliant at what she did on this trip. Tend to shoot, Crooks bang down low and connects regardless. No whistle and now with 22. I mean, you feel like if you can just get the ball to 5-5 five, five in the paint, you're likely it's going in. She's already shooting 10 of 12 from the floor today. Halfway home in our third quarter. Lead down to eight. Cyclones have been dominant in terms of points in the paint. Against the zone. Masonis off the mark. Corral by two, here comes Iowa State. Well, it's felt like it's been a different team, the Cyclones, mm -hmm. here in this second half. This is why I love quarters, because the game is never really over. And a foul down low, free throws coming for the Cyclones. After this quick break, the lead down to eight, Iowa State on the move at Maples when we come back.
Let's check out how they are fueling the run. Brought to you by Wendy's. Iowa State coming in on a bit of a heater. They've won six of seven. The lone loss to Texas in the Big 12 championship. But along the way, got five wins versus ranked foes this year and the third consecutive 20 win campaign for head coach Bill Finley. Yeah, this is a masterful job in coaching by Coach Finley and his staff. You know, his 29 years of coaching, he's only second in wins when you think about Tara Vanderbilt, who we see will coming up in our next matchup. But this season with a young team, Fat Five, five wins against the top 25. And not only that, you're, you're peaking at the right time. It's not often to have a young team still with a lot of gas coming into the NCAA tournament. This team's got it. Second free throw on the way for Kelsey Jones, two of two. Iowa State, you want to talk about being back in it in a hurry. The lead down to six. It was 20 in our second quarter just moments ago. So you're saying the storm of the cyclone got pretty strong pretty quickly? Category something or hey, another. Hey, let's go. Kubek thought about it. Baseline. Brown Turner, the mid-range, off the right side of the rim. Kelsey Jones has been a bigger factor in this third quarter. We've heard of that last name a time or two. Crooks, Crooks. inside. You're going to have to send help side. Remember I said you got to send somebody over on the on the toss. She's getting not only the toss, but nobody on the backside with the double team. 24.7 rebounds approaching her career high. Audie Crooks. Maryland starting to feel the pressure of this Iowa State comeback. Crooks again grabs it and it was thrown right in her direction. With well, this game, it's momentum. And perhaps its outcome has changed in a hurry. The bump before the shot. And Brown Turner sideswiped Brown that time. Well, I love the chemistry, though, between Audie and Addie out there. They have great eye contact in the middle of the play. And you can see how they're starting to read each other. And you hear Brown Turner, who you know, had to get a Band-Aid on her finger earlier, just kind of been shaking her hand every once in a while. See it right there on her right hand. You know, but the chemistry coming together for Iowa State, you know, their passing is crispier. It could have been a bright lights, big stage, young squad. They needed 20 minutes to get comfortable. That is well said. The free throw was missed by Brown. She's 75% on the year. Bill Finley, he said, you know, last year we lost to Toledo in the first round. We came through this incredible run in the Big 12 championship. I said, Coach, what did you learn about that run, despite knowing that this is a vastly different team? It's like we needed more rest. And this year, we have taken that into account with all these freshmen. We didn't want them to hit the freshman wall. That hasn't happened. And here at Maples in Stanford and post Big 12 tournament, he's given his team more breathers just yeah. to make sure they are well rested for this game. Joe drops the bounce, and we are tied at 59. A 10 0 run for the Cyclones. Here's McDaniel through traffic, was fouled, and she will shoot two. And McDaniel hit the deck pretty hard on the back end. Well, this Iowa State offense starting to match that same energy. Now half a dozen threes for the Cyclones. And that time Jones getting in on the party, a little lucky bounce off the backboard there. <laughs> Coach Family keeping those arms crossed. Does not feel comfortable just yet. Brown gets a breather as you take a look at some of the largest comebacks in NCAA tournament history. Iowa State trailed by 20. Middle Tennessee with that comeback today against Louisville. Well, how about that? You got NTSU, Maryland also here on the screen. What an effort. And, and to do it so quickly, right? I mean, we're not even at the end of the third quarter. We've got three minutes left. If Iowa State stays hot, we could see them go up double digits. I'll go back to three-point differential. Huge advantage for Maryland in the first half. Huge advantage for Iowa State in the second. The Terps have yet to connect from downtown. Iowa State already with four triples here in our third quarter. Crooks wide open and a chance for three. And the Cyclones a free throw away from the lead. 
You know, without the size and the height, how do you defend this pass? Emily Ryan, an incredible assist giver. Down to Audie Crooks, whose hands, whose feet, and the soft touch. Look, she gets that ball in her hands, and you see how small that basketball looks like. You're not taking it away from her. First lead for the Cyclone since it was 2-0. Wow. About five days ago. <laughs> Here's Sellers, first team all Big Ten, connects inside. That's who you would expect to answer for Maryland. Sellers has got to reset the tone. You know, she started this game going right at the rim. And so you need that kind of play to reestablish your scoring and your confidence. Crooks with position in the middle of the double team. She's got 29. And you see how Jakia Brown Turner tried to get over there on the catch, but it was late. And a steal by Ryan. Three on one. And out of control with the layup attempt. Terps get it back, trailing 64 63. Brand new game in our second half. McDaniel left open. Terps was still without a three so far in the third. It'll stay on this end. Well, you wondered what all of these freshmen would feel like playing in their first NCAA tournament game. The Fab Five, they call them in names. Mm -hmm. Audie Crooks tonight has produced a career high tying 29 points. And Brooke, we still have 11 plus minutes left to go. Oh yeah, she could, she could get out of here with a 40. 40 piece perhaps, we'll see the block. Two claims it. How about the defense for five and white? Got to have it. She's been big tonight, taking a charge that time, a block. Ellinger off the mark and a foul on the so floor. Got to be careful. And that'll be her fourth if it is on numeral zero, and it is. And she's got to be careful because she could get technical here. She keeps talking to the officials. So good job by Brenda Freeze. Just get her out, get her breather. I can understand those frustrating moments. And being a postseason play, I got called two fouls early and had to sit the whole half. Now, this is late in the game, so it matters a lot more because Sellers was that one to get this game started. She's been their leader, first team all Big Ten. You gotta put her, in my opinion, you gotta put her right back in this game. You know, I feel like at the start of the fourth, but it's risky. Shai Sellers, daughter of former NBA standout Brad Sellers, who played at Ohio State back in the day. He's in the building tonight. A couple of free throws, the lead up to three. And Iowa State pulling up Maryland here in the third quarter with what we saw the Terps doing <laughs> in the first quarter. They have outscored Maryland 30 to 11. Kubek remains hot. So that, that three ball gives her 24, and that's right at her career high. Look, that's the pick and pop that has just been ruining this Iowa State defense. Do recognized it, but she was too late to contest. Career numbers being put up by both sides. Tied at 66. Under a minute to go in the third. Oh, what a game this has turned out to be. And an offensive foul. That'll go on Crooks down low, her second. That was Brene Alexander. Oh, excuse me, Maryland's defense just trying to establish position inside. And Crooks just fell her way too much arm movement and elbows. That's why she got called for the foul. Sonis, Crooks, the rebound. And she now is at another double double. And with the shot clock off, we are tied at the end of the third. Iowa State can play for the final shot. An interesting game and an interesting turn of events here at Maples. Do off the back iron. Kubek clears. 30 minutes in, we are squared up at 66 points apiece. The 10 seed Maryland, the 7 seed Iowa State, and the Cyclones in the third quarter stealing the show. Yeah, fighting their way back. This is the young guns out here. They're not intimidated, just needed a little time to get comfortable. Audie Cooks with a huge game today.
And we take a look at the NCAA Women's Championship bracket, Regional 4 in Portland here at Maples Pavilion. The winner of our game plays the winner of the nightcap between Stanford and Norfolk State, the two versus the 15, three quarters in. We are tied at 66 as, as we take a look at our Honda Star Stories presented by Honda. Ali Kubek, 24, that's a season high, her career high of 28, and Audie Crooks has tied her career high as a freshman with 29 and a full 10 minutes left to go. Yeah, well, naturally, you thought, you know, Kubek would come in here and go six to seven from three. That's that's the scouting report. You, you saw that, right? She has 13 threes on the season, oh. and she has six tonight. Right. So, no. <laughs> Brooke Weisbro, well. Boy, Phil Pot, fourth quarter underway. And Jakia Brown-Turner picks up the personal. Free throws coming for Emily Ryan. Emily Ryan won. But that's the madness of March, right? When a player that nobody expects to have this kind of impact right out of the gate, like Ali Kubek has, it happens. She's tripled her season average with a full quarter left to go. And yeah. She's one of the reasons Maryland has a chance here. You love it. You love to see the stars shine, and then you love to see players who become stars in this moment. We're seated on the women's side, of course, on the men's side. Oakland you know, get their 10 threes from a guy coming off the bench to beat Kentucky. Pretty amazing. They shot 20, made 10. Muscling inside is McDaniel. She's somebody who started this game, too, with a ton of energy. That defense was there. We'd like to see if you're Brenda Freeze. See Bree McDaniel get some steals, just some deflections like that. Like, just that helps secure them the rebound. The lob almost went in the basket yeah. for three from Ryan to Crooks. Herbs get it back, tied at 68. Kubek held in check so far in the second half. Masonis works it to McDaniel in the floater off glass. No. Skip pass Ballinger. That's a three. And it's good. Well, we have seen excellent three-point shooting and passing in this game. Good decision making from Iowa State. Anna Bellinger has been fantastic. On the other end, Brown Turner, no. And because of how much attention Audie Crooks, you know, you're forced to give her, then that skip pass with that three is open. Daniel, a step back, short, and a foul call. Brown Turner was fighting for the loose ball. Let's go back again to that Iowa State skip pass. Here's Emily Ryan, nothing down low. That's okay, kick it over the help just late enough to get a clean look. Bellinger also picked up the foul on the other end. Maryland maintains possession. Terps facing their largest deficit of this game at three. We're just tuning in, Maryland led by 20 in the second quarter. A nifty move by Masonis. You see where Maryland's trying to get their points right now, right? Get in the paint, short jump shots, keep attacking. You try to get Iowa State to commit that foul. Another three from the corner off the mark by Jones. And ahead to Brown Turner. Made a nice grab. Alexander for three. Well, the threes that were dropping in the first two quarters for Maryland have not dropped so far in our second half. And every one that is released off the fingertips looks like it's going in. I mean, even the misses are incredibly close. There's the defense from McDaniel. Left-handed finish. No, she missed the layup. Brown has it stripped up and in for Masonis. Well, that's one way to do it. Yeah, and Addie Brown just looks exhausted out there. The freshman trying to fight. She got the board, and then here comes the bang for Maryland to take it away and score. Herbs back in front, 72-71. Looking for Crooks. Fouled from behind. Jakia Brown-Turners didn't like the call. And so the foul trouble mounting up. And Sellers checking back in with her four fouls. Kia Brown-Turner has three, Masonis has three, McDaniel has three. Brenda Freeze's team not that deep considering the injuries that went down in the last three months. 
Terps have the lead. Crooks with the advantage inside and off of her fingertips. And Crooks is going to be your first option, no doubt. But awareness, Sellers on the floor, four fouls. I don't know. I'm trying to get the ball maybe to Bellinger, who she was guarding. Say, hey, put the ball on the floor a couple times. See if you can get some contact. Get her out. Seven minutes remaining. Got more basketball later tonight. Back here at Maples, Stanford, the two seed, Norfolk State, MEAC champions, the 15 seed. Here's Sellers, full head of steam. Brooks clears. Ryan behind the back. But the defense by Sellers, and the shot boarded out of bounds. And let's see. It'll stay on this end. So blocked by Sellers at the last possible moment. Yeah, Artie Crook's getting real deep in the paint there. She wants to make sure as the game gets on, that's wearing to hold your position. So if Maryland can continue to throw fresh bodies at her, make her out of position, but she still got that touch. A new career high of 31 for Crooks. Corner three, no, Crooks clears. Outlet pass to Bellinger. Now you got to go right at Sellers. The two near turnovers. Ryan from downtown. How about that? The composure of the senior. She says, we got this. Puts her hands out, too, to say, hold on now. Hold on. That is a big swing of momentum, mm -hmm. potentially. It could have been two turnovers. Instead, it goes to Ryan, who drains the three. Both teams on the deck. Iowa State gets it back. Patience, composure. Emily Ryan understanding. She can shoot it. The defense is nowhere near her, so she takes advantage. You know, somebody who just scores seven points a game, but gives you eight assists, four rebounds. Three-point differential. I mean, this is the game. It's not rocket science. It's basketball. <laughs> First half, Maryland made its threes. Iowa State didn't. Advantage Terps, they led by 20. Second half, Iowa State has made its threes. Maryland did, has not. And the advantage goes to the Cyclones, who currently lead by four. Brooks position again. 33 on the board for 55 in white. It's hard to understand where maybe the help side is for Maryland. Such a good defensive team. And I want to see somebody running over there, jumping and trying to get that ball just over the outstretched arms of Audie Crooks. Sellers, Brown, turn, a chance for three. Well, that'll stop the ISU run at 7 0, dead in its tracks. And the lead down to four with a free throw to come for Brown Turner. Maryland does well in traffic and small spaces here. Sellers coming off the screen. Stops, gets through two defenders, and a great job by Jakia Brown-Turner to move without the basketball, to be like, yo, I'm right here. Get into that pocket. Give her an easy pass. Fourth foul on Addie Brown, a freshman from Derby, Kansas. Brown-Turner completes the three-point play. Now Maryland needs a stop. Yeah. And Brown-Turner almost came away with a travel or a charge there. Emily Ryan. Found her way to the rim, and a foul called on the putback by Crooks. She has been an unstoppable force down low. It, it has got to be just absolutely frustrating to no end for the Maryland defense. You kind of see Jakia Brown-Turner holding her hands up like, what more can I do? Look, a lot of teams have had that same feeling, 31 they, of them. They'll call that foul on the floor. No free throws for Crooks. Mm. That's the fourth on Brown-Turner. Crooks position again, 35. Quickly ahead to Kubek in the response. No, no, no loss, right? The bounce back. How quick was that for Maryland? Maybe four seconds? A little showtime for the Terrapins. Mm -hmm. One possession game, Kubek with 26. Fantastic matchup here in the first round. Do for three. Nightmare do. Iowa State back in the three-point party. Look at the differential in the second half. Seven threes for the Cyclones so far. Sellers silky smooth with a mid-range. 
Yeah, you're not going to shake Sellers, the confidence that she has. Coming back in this game, playing with four fouls. Ryan again with a brilliant pass, but it was picked off by Masonis. Yeah, Crooks was expecting a shot from Ryan. And rejected by Crooks on the other end. Now, Masonis had a path for a moment. I just feel like each team is matching energy on each end of the floor. This is great. What a wonderful game we're seeing in this first round. Iowa State trying to complete one of the largest comebacks in NCAA tournament history. I want to suggest they've made it look easy. They have not, but it happened quickly. Right after the break, here's Ryan, the hesitation. And the finish! His big shot, Emily Ryan. The three, that layup, but Kubek's got the answer all day for you. What you got? A career high 29 for Ali Kubek. One possession game again. Big shots for both sides. The first ever meeting between Maryland and Iowa State. Two coaches who are good friends, but big time rivals on a night like tonight at Maples. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Welcome back to Stanford, California, Maples Pavilion. And what a game unfolding in the first round of March Madness. Back and forth, we have gone in our fourth quarter. The stars shining brightly. Brooke Weisbrod, Roy Philpott, Ali Kubek, a career high, 29 points tonight. Audie Crooks, a freshman, first team all Big 12 performer, a career high, 35. And FYI, neither one of these ladies are done with production based off what we've seen so far. Not at all. I mean, they've been the stars of the show tonight. Audie Crooks, you knew. We knew about her coming into this tournament, but she has just shined so bright. More defense for Maryland. And a steal by Alexander over and back, gives it back to the Terps. But the hustle by five and black on clear display. Yeah, that is that is fire coming out of that timeout. You, know, you can get that kind of defense in a stop. That's what Maryland is, has really built now, this game on. Remember, they were switching positions one through five, giving Iowa State the business in the first half. Sellers has four fouls. She'll give it up to McDaniel. And she traveled. McDaniel gives it back to Iowa State. Bellinger remains on the floor for the moment. And taking her time to get up 13 and white. Her teammates indicating to the coaching staff she's okay. She's holding her nose, walking away from the huddle. And we'll be given a moment to inspect and make sure that there's any activity happening there. They'll take care of it. 85-82. And this veteran officiating crew is going to take a look at that last sequence. Jesse Dickerson, Infinity Robinson, currently the scorer's table. And Charles Gonzalez is going to make his way over to give us a 4 1 1. So the ruling on the floor is a travel. They're trying to look for an upgraded foul here. And it looks like the contact happened right there with the elbow. And then you see Bellinger go down, but didn't look excessive. Intentional looked like a basketball play to me. Uh, I can't imagine this getting upgraded. Play stands is called. And they'll keep the play as a travel, which I agree with. Well, at the end of that sequence, the most important aspect, Iowa State gets it back on the traveling yeah. violation by Bree McDaniel. And the Cyclones have that three-point lead. Trying to put the finishing touches on one of the greatest comebacks in the history of March Madness. And trailed by 20 in the second quarter. Came back quickly after halftime. 
And have led by as many as six. Well, look at that on-ball defense from Alexander. Trying to provide a spark for her team. The shot clock at 15. Ryan to Crooks. Banging down low, 37 on the board. Boy, Sellers with a risky help side there. Even contact with no call. And Audie Crooks, it's amazing to me her concentration as she's moving with holding off defenders and then able to finish. It's incredible. Masonas to Sellers, under two to play, a monster step. And she took one too many. Traveling on numeral zero, Cheyenne Sellers. More full court pressure. And Ryan will set up the offense in no hurry. Her team ahead by five. And an offensive foul. Oh, wow. And McDaniel remains down, clutching her stomach. New life for the Terps. Still plenty of time remaining, 92 seconds. And a big possession as we take another look. Yeah. And Daniel took the shot, looks at the midsection here from the shoulder. And for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Sellers with the miss. Jump ball, it stays on this end. 122 to go. Well, if you're Maryland, you, you want to continue to attack, but you know, don't forget about the three-point shot, right? You're gonna suck in the defense and then rely on some of that shooting that's got you ahead in this game in that first half. Alexander was off the mark. It goes back to Iowa State. And still a foul to give for yep. the Terrapins. Read my mind where I was just about to say, just three team fouls. So you got to go full court press, try to create some turnovers. And but Ryan's... Ryan tracking that pass down. <laughs> kind of held the defender off as well. Jones thought about it, works it inside to Crooks. Number 55 with 39 tonight. That is a quality decision by Jones. She could have taken that three. Instead, she looked inside, said, I got a better option. Mid-range no for Kubek and Iowa State. Sensing the comeback could be complete. Yeah, got a foul now. Brenda Freeze letting her team know it. We got to get this clock stopped. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first round continues tonight on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Bill Finley, his team upset in the first round a year ago against Toledo. Right after winning the Big 12 championship. A different mode of operation this year with a younger team, more rest involved. And it took about two quarters, but his team responding in the best possible way beginning right after halftime. As Jakia Brown-Turner just fouled out. Iowa State leading by seven in shooting free throws. This has been an incredible game and a comeback for the ages for the Cyclones. We have questions about, hey, can a young team shine in the tournament? Do they have enough confidence? And what they don't know, they don't know. And Brenda Freeze was the first one to tell us, this team with Audie Crooks, Addie Brown, this, this dangerous young team, she knows what a, a team with no conscience is capable of. Great things. You know, they're coming in here not understanding maybe the depth and the breadth of, of how Weighted this NCAA tournament is but Emily Ryan that senior up there the seniors on this team They know and they're making the most of it Bill Finley year number 29 A cancer survivor overcame throat cancer more than 12 years ago He loses his voice from time to time including before arriving here at Maples Pavilion for the NCAA tournament He's been sipping on Starbucks and the diet soda is making sure the voice is as strong as it possibly can be. And he is here and in it to win it. A long ways from home, some 1,900 miles from Ames, Iowa. This has been an incredible turn of events in the second half with yeah. ISU and what they've been able to do.
They have a crowd that traveled strong from Ames here, and they have performed. I mean, it's a big investment to take your team this far out west and to show up under you know, these kind of bright lights. You know, in, a, in a place knowing you've got a, a great crowd of probably waiting Sunday for a team that's won a national championship before. But these are from Power Five conferences. You know, this is, this is what you sign up for. When you're in high school, you dream of days like this. Out of the timeout, Sellers. Oh, He's going to shoot foul. two, and that would have been number five after Brown Turner just fouled out. Now my initial response was was charged. We'll go back and take another look at this. You see Sellers on the move, and yeah, certainly the right call. And Nelson not in legal guarding position before Sellers made her upward move. Audie Crooks back on the floor. A career night for her. The talented freshman, all Big 12. 39 points, 12 rebounds, and at times tonight, she has made it look very easy with the position, the finish, the physicality. At times, the whole time. You know, what is the answer you know, to try to stop Crooks? Because you're not going to move her off the block if, if she's disciplined, if she's patient. She's going to get that catch no matter what. You've got to send a help side, somebody you know, big, athletic, somebody who can jump, and you've got to get the ball before she, she touches it. Otherwise, it's game over. Cyclones utilize a timeout. The lead at six. And for Brenda Freeze, what's the approach here? You still have some time. Obviously, defense becomes paramount. You could use yeah. a steal or two, but what yeah. is she telling her team? Yeah, I mean, no doubt. You, you've got to stop the clock. you got to just try to get the ball back in your hands. So it's it's steal to foul. And, and the bounce back now is even shorter, right? You have no room for error, no room for just letting the player get a dribble or two off. And this is where the experience, though, for Maryland, the Elite Eight, that's where this really could help. It's 43 seconds. That's plenty of time to come back from six down. Maryland led by as many as 20 points tonight. If Iowa State holds on, it becomes the second largest comeback in the history of the NCAA tournament. The Cyclones outscoring the Terrapins by 22 so far in our second half. And the winner of Stanford, Norfolk State, awaits the winner of this game tonight. And each team with two timeouts, so Maryland can advance the basketball. And they'll choose to foul Crooks. Now she has a certain confidence about her and you mentioned how she's able to grip a basketball. She has a size advantage that most players simply cannot deal with and that has been on display and that has resulted in a new career high tonight. Mm. With 39 points. Well, I love the way that that she sees the guards because one of the most challenging things for a guard to do as Crooks misses her free throw is make a post entry pass and it sounds simple it's not a lot of guards turn the ball over trying to get that ball inside so it's a skill set that has to be developed between the post and the guard and i just love the way hardy crooks makes it easy mad at herself for missing the first free throw the second one gives her 40. now the winner of this game advances to play the winner of stanford norfolk state cardinal are in the house cam brink She's ready, she's enthusiastic, and her team feels a little different this year. They feel like they're more connected, better leadership from within. Cam Brink confirmed that to us yesterday, and they're gonna have to battle Norfolk State, the MEAC champions, who, by the way, have won 15 games in a row, have a couple of former Power Five players on their roster. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, Diamond Johnson, does that ring name a ring a bell? NC State, great, also spent some time at Rutgers, so. You know, she has found her home at Norfolk State and, and just felt like she wanted to be a part of an HBCU, make a difference, you know, be on campus and has just made an incredible run for, for Norfolk State and what they're doing. Look, they come here, they're ready to ride. You know, they're going to shoot it. They're an emotional team, according to Coach, so we are looking forward to it. Seven-point lead, Maryland has possession. Sellers operating quickly, the sweeping Mark. scoop. And 91-86, and for the bucket by Sellers. And timeout Iowa State, which means they can advance the basketball and kind of beat that full court pressure at Maryland, no doubt would put on you. Both teams remain in the bonus, 38.3 to go. We've talked about the three-point differential, first half to second for both sides. That has been a difference maker. Crooks in her 40 points. Allie Kubak, who got off to an incredible start, 
Still with 29. That also is a new career high for her. First ever meeting between these two teams, Maryland out of the Big Ten, Iowa State from the Big 12. And Brenda Fries and Bill Finley go back to their days in Ames where Coach Fries worked for Coach Finley for four seasons before moving on, becoming one of the top coaches in the game. Boy, Crooks fell down hard. Appears to be okay and up quickly. It has been physical tonight. Well, she's been an outstanding defender, Brene Alexander has. I mean, just seen her on-ball defense, her tenacity. Like, like Audie Crooks, she doesn't really get frustrated. I've yet to see her in any sense just look, other than when she's missing a shot, but not against anybody. Or, not her teammates, just a positive young woman out there making a big time performance. She's missed two shots tonight. That's it? And she's got a 40 piece up already. 18 of 20 from the floor. Let's go. 18 of 20. Must have been that poolside reading she had earlier in the day. Just going through the scouting report, kind of getting your zen on, that refresh. Two big misses there, yeah. a timeout, still a two possession game. And those two misses gives Maryland new hope with still more than 35 seconds to go. And I think for Maryland, you go back to three. I mean, you don't have any time, basically. You got to get as much as you can. They're a good three point shooting team. You try to find Kubek, really anybody from outside right now. Well, for the most part, it's been a clean game, well officiated. Yeah. Iowa State with one timeout remaining, the Terps out of timeouts. And both teams, of course, in the bonus. For Maryland, do you have to have a three at this point? Yes, I think so. I, I don't know that you have enough time to to try to create steals and timeouts and get to the free throw line and all that. I, I'm at least trying to take one three on this possession to see where it gets me. And of course, send everybody to crash. You try to get that offensive put back, maybe an and one. I mean, that's your best bet. You can get an and one or a three, stop this clock. Feeling good if you're Maryland. Ellie Kubek, seven of eight from three point range. They could dial up a play for number 14 in black. That may be one way to go. Meanwhile, Crooks with her 40 points has tied an NCAA tournament record for points by a Big 12 player. Player she has tied is one Brittany Griner, who had 40 for Baylor back in 2011. There's Maryland trying to go for the three. Alexander, no, and the rebound by Ryan. That's a big sequence. Cyclones will shoot two more, and Emily Ryan, 88% at the line this year, Brooke. And I like the setup, the play well designed for Maryland to get a good looking three point shot. You get the best opportunity, and quickly, I thought they got the shot off quickly and efficiently. And the big rebound for Iowa State, and that is the young woman you want at the line if you're the Cyclones. Three of four tonight, 88% on the year. And Emily Ryan with 16 on the board to go along with 14 assists. Well, the future coach, Bill Finley said, when you come to one of our practices, you hear two voices, mine and Emily Ryan's. She is an absolute leader for the Cyclones. Coming off the foot injury, she missed nine games at the start of this season, and those dimes we just told you about, legit. Man, how long have we talked about that enough? 14 assists, Emily Ryan. Alexander from deep, she's short. Good rebound by Jackson, Cyclones have it. And Maryland not electing to foul. Time ticking away, down 20, no problem. Iowa State finds a way and advances to the second round. Well, an incredible comeback for the Cyclones. These two coaches, friends, they go back a long way. A lot of respect here for both coaches, Coach Freeze, Coach Finley. And these Cyclones will fight for another day. What a comeback, unbelievable. 20 down after all those threes that Maryland hit in the first half. How did Iowa State find the confidence to come back out here and fight? Second largest comeback in NCAA tournament history. The Cyclones trail by 20 in the second quarter and win by seven going away. Well, Brooke, you asked how. Audie Crooks, one of several reasons 
the Cyclones were able to complete that comeback. And as we take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. And what else can you say? Audie Crooks in her first year playing like a fifth year absolute standout in her first postseason right? game. Comfortable, confident, at ease out there, asking for the basketball. Just never getting out of sorts or out of this game. Audie Crooks, 18 and 20. Little Courtney Paris vibes out here. An incredible performance. <laughs> Forgot she had to come.